Okay, so hel hello and welcome everybody to my one hour commentary that I promised you. So um, in this walkthrough, let's call it like this, uh, we will see some uh, progress steps of how um, the artwork that you can see here um, has been created. And yeah, I will go there, uh, I will go through this piece step by step. Um, of how I started to uh, the black and white version and yeah so here we go so what I always do when I start a print or artwork piece uh, I start with uh, let's call it um, yeah research and I pick some images in this case like from China those lampions and those uh, Chinese buildings and I make a kind of image bashing and um, overlay some uh, mood colors yeah, and draw things in so that I get a good feeling of how my composition of the image might look at the end and what I want to implement of course so um, what you can see here is uh, I basically create some rectangles and pick colors from different spots to have my color, color palette uh, ready and um, yeah, once this is done, I basically put my character in. And the way I'm doing is the uh, the way I'm doing this is just um, yeah, trying things out and um, reposition things, redrawing things, as you can see here, um, deforming things, and yeah, see what works best. Um, yeah, so the uh, character you see here is my uh, evil i call them uh, i basically have them in almost every artwork i do and yeah i just try things out um in this case with a sword and a evil looking thing i want this picture to have some very dynamic feeling and uh, also in this piece the character comes very close to the camera uh, yeah and what you can see here is that I'm basically putting some bamboos or bamboo I think it's bamboo in English bamboo pieces inside of it and uh, position things around and basically what I had in mind is that this uh, character comes very close to the camera as, as I said with his sword in a very uh, dangerous distance and is cutting pieces while he's basically flying over the water you can see here and right now I'm drawing in the shadows and get my light source ready so I can see where the light is coming from so in this example I wanted the, the light coming from the back some warmth in the background and some uh, light colors uh, some cool colors I mean in the foreground and I basically wanted the light source to uh, cut the edge of the sword so to say yeah and uh, we are pretty much done of the uh, with the composition or the concept art let's say it's very rough of course it's, it has been done in uh, half an hour or something I don't know or an hour not so long yeah, still trying to get my color palette right the colors I want to choose yeah now let's jump over to the character creation so for my character I have a of course a very special uh, let's say technique um, that might not go very well with other characters my character is pretty simple doesn't have much color has a lot of empty space so it's a um, very clean character and uh, some techniques I use here is recreating shapes reposition shapes changing them changing the scale or deform it as well choose the uh, use the perspective um, deformation transformation whatever and yeah uh, right now we go over to uh, the 
create the sort. For the sort, I, I wanted to uh, use a katana, but I wanted it to have this kind of optical deformation due to the movement of the character. So the sword will have this very, um, let's say, uh, stretched shape. Yeah, it basically goes around like a bow bec because the uh, character is uh, turning while he's uh, doing this kind of strike with a sword. And what I always do as a, a second technique, let's say, for, for the character is that once the character is done, I just take the whole character and deform it a little bit and um, yeah, to get proportions right. So in this case, uh, I went with the third one, I think. But yeah, you can guess of, of how it works and why I do it. Once that is done, I use the stomp tool. In German, it's called Stempel. I don't know if stomp is right. Uh, to get rid of the background, and basically, I just put the character on top of the whole image and get rid of the background to see if it goes well inside. And after that, I do some changes as well and adjust the whole piece. As you can see here with the sword, for example, and the character rotating it a little bit to get the movement right that I want. And so this is the character I created. As you can see, I jump over to Illustrator now. This is also a very special part of my progress because I'm using Illustrator and Photoshop in a very, let's say, hand overing style. So basically, I create uh, the the yeah the the shape in Illustrator and uh, the outlines and everything, the line art. And once that is done in Illustrator, I import it to Photoshop where I'm doing the coloring in the end because I'm not so used to the gradient tool in Illustrator or well I could use it but I don't like it and so I just do it in Photoshop <coughs> and uh, yeah nevertheless m all the uh, pieces that I import are of course vector based same as the gradients that I will put on uh, layers so layer styles will also be scalable up to uh, infinity so therefore it doesn't make so much change in my opinion if you have the final image as a Photoshop file or Illustrator file if you not have all your layers um, yeah, merged together. Yeah, so let's uh, s jump over to the bamboo creation I, as you may have seen in the blink of an eye at the beginning, I had some references. So basically, I just when I use references, I go to Google Image Search and search for bamboo in this case. And yeah, recreate the shapes that I want. And yeah, I, I'm not so exact with this because. I can do a lot of changes afterwards so basically it's just to have a 3D object that I can move around in the 3D space and can uh, uh, trace it afterwards in my cell shading style. Yeah, and once th that is done, I use Cinema 4D to render out uh, perspectives of the piece. I usually um, render them out in a very high quality and with AA16 on, so uh, the I can yeah, deform it within a Photoshop 
and the quality doesn't look so bad that it is kind of untraceable afterwards in Illustrator or something. Yeah, and now we come to this step. As you can see, I, I rendered out a couple of perspectives of the bamboo objects and just dry out things, lay them around, try to um, put things on top of each other, if see if it works and it's basically just drying out even after I created a few of those bamboo uh, sticks you will see that I will start rearranging them afterwards again and again but it's always good to be flexible in your project so you can guess so once that is done I start off with the first cell shading um, shadow part in this case so what I'm doing is um, taking 25% black shape and just draw um, the areas that I want to be uh, have a shadow that, that I want to have a shadow so basically I'm always looking of where my uh, light source is coming from so in this case it's coming from the right side so the, the right side of the face is um, light, of course. Therefore, I draw the shadow on the right side. It's pretty simple. I'm also um, c uh, concern or consider, yeah, consider the hair, for example, and the the shape of the objects I want to to have a shadow from. So that's um, but this is something that comes from experience and what I did now is I made the character kind of glossy let's say basically I did the same thing with the shadows but just with white and a little bit of transparency gradient so the light the light is coming from the right as I said and therefore um, I adjust the gradient also to this area Yeah, um, I always like to to start the char to have the character more details than the whole environment in the beginning because it's always good to have a almost finished character because this is what keeps me going. I mean, in this case, the character is very close to the camera and therefore it will have a very high level of detail. So I think it's not wrong to start giving the character some details right in the beginning before everything is done and as I said this keeps me going to continue the painting or the print um, yeah because the character looks nice so I just try to adjust the background to it as well and as you can see here I'm right now starting off to trace the bamboo sticks that I created before in ZBrush and yeah, what I use is you can guess it I think it's just the path tool with outline and then I also will uh, just drag and drop it from there into Photoshop and I will have a smart object that I can rescale to whatever size I want So one thing that is um, very important for cell shading is that you always have to uh, keep in mind of what kind of elements will have a lot of details or a lot of lines and different shades or shapes because those in the foreground of course are closer to to the camera and therefore you should give them more detail so for the bamboo I will have let's say 
an average of uh, of detail level because I mean they are in the foreground but as they will move very they are uh, in a very uh, progressive motion and therefore I decided to not give them so much detail I tried out to give them some like uh, this kind of cut right into it but uh, afterwards I decided to leave that even out so so for those of you who have who are beginners in in illustrator should be able to create such a thing I think it's not that hard just take an image and trace the lines you want and yeah well it's always uh, better if you have done it a couple of times so I'm building some very interesting uh, shadows here as you can see I'm not just following very straight lines I, I also try to consider some depth of the object and put in some curves of where the shadows go or might go even if there is not uh, uh, outline for something like uh, I don't know the the thing where the the bam bamboo sticks are connected but um, I think you can see it very clear in this example that it's it looks way more interesting if you not just follow the uh, basic shape of the uh, object you want to uh, give it to, to give that you want to give a shadow so yeah you always try to put in a um, little bit of complexity so the uh, pieces that you see here um, are let's say pretty fixed in position because w once I have the shadow inside I can't just move them anywhere I want because then the shadow or the light source will be wrong so but um, I was uh, yeah very um, sure with those pieces and therefore I already started to give them some shadow and you can guess it right now I'm starting off to um, re-sketch the, the temple let's call it temple in the background because I don't want to copy the picture that I just uh, throw threw in. I want to have my own shapes, and I also wanted this kind of balcony um, that you saw there, and therefore I pushed that shape out a little bit. And also the roof was very ex uh, very important to give it this kind of Chinese feeling with those uh, curved um, yeah it's this curved roof with, uh, with two sides where, where it is a little bit higher and the middle part is a little bit set down and you might uh, think what this is here so this is um, of how I created the water I basically created this kind of loop shape and connected the areas with each other so I have um, a lot of uh, space for for water which I draw in here to see um, how it will go and what I wanted to have in these pictures are th uh, three levels of um, complexity so the one that is more in the background will have uh, a lot of um, waves visible the one in the middle a little bit less and the one in the foreground just even more or less <laughs> as you may may see now and I, th I I think it's clear why I'm doing this I can't explain it so well now in my uh, uh, average l English but 
I think it's clear if you put something uh, in the very foreground in this case with the with the water you you can't see so much of the water motion that you because in the background you basically can see more of it so and that's why I I did this kind of uh, thing and in this stage here you um, possibly might see where this is going already so this already look like kind of fluid that comes close to the camera as you can see I already adjusted a little bit of uh, the color scheme N normally I first create a piece in black and white but it's always good if you experience while you're doing things because as as I said it always gives you a little bit of a motivation um, especially for this kind of piece because they take so much time and you just want to have the feeling to be a little bit closer to the end and therefore you already try to to give it a kind of a final feeling um, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a, a object for the, the temple that, that resembles the temple in the end or will be the temple um, the reason why I'm doing this because uh, the reason why I'm doing this is basically that I want an, an object that I can uh, reposition and that is um, following the rules of perspective very well because if I just would draw this in it uh, will be a little bit dif difficult and therefore I use this uh, 3D element as a kind of guideline for my um, shape for my final shape that I will choose for this um, yeah I used the the shape that I retraced before as a reference but uh, during the modeling I decided to to change a few things I basically wanted to keep the roof and those balcony thing because it gave the the image a kind of a flow you know it um, it, it basically has an uh, object that comes a little bit more into the picture yeah and this is what I'm doing here right now and it gives the picture a little bit more of an interesting uh, uh, yeah design because it, it just felt too empty if there's nothing coming out of the the building and there would be too much free space Also what I liked in this um, perspective is that I have this very high tower but even um, if, if the uh, tower is pretty high it's completely visible in, th in the image because the camera is placed pretty pretty close to the water and is um, set up a little bit uh, from, from down to, to the to to uh, to the whole scale, and therefore you can see it a little bit from the frog perspective. And um, yeah, this is the final temple that I will render out now. As you may see from those orange um, rum squares, it it's a pretty big image. But um, that's because I always work on a very uh, big canvas. Um, yeah, because my PC can handle it, and uh, it's always better to to have the um, to have a lot of space where you can um, work on the details pretty well. So that's basically what I like. I mean, you can in this case you could even do it on a small paper-sized uh, canvas and then later scale it up. But yeah, that's just how I work. Um, as you can see, I put the, the put the temple already inside of the picture and um, made it 
uh, and worked a little bit around and see how it works. And um, right now I'm putting in uh, those Chinese lampions, you know, those um, candle uh, lightweight pieces that are flying in the sky. I, I think a lot of you may have seen this already in a movie or something or someone of you may have seen it live already but um, I think for for mood uh, it's a very very w interesting thing because it's somehow organic and it's a l it also uh, can serve as a light source and it also takes a lot of space as you can see and as I needed some space over uh, because I have some space left over there I decided to put it there and also I wanted to come um, come from off those uh, this Chinese location where a civilization might uh, be so far so good what I'm doing right now is um, adding a little bit of atmosphere um, the elements you see here or that I will recreate now are um, my uh, kind of style let's say um, it's basically a very complex shape it's easy to create but it has a lot of uh, impact in my opinion um, it's all also uh, has ca can serve as smoke but in in this case I want it to be kind of fluid that um, ca that uh, is generated or simulated by um, cutting the bamboo and all these uh, fruits that will and fl fly around later on but um, yeah I'm starting this right now because um, in in this stage of the image I I can s I have a lot of space where I can place things and I also can enhance the the movement of the character very well at this situation and therefore I decided to put it in now and yeah just to fill fill up uh, areas that are empty and yeah, the, the rules that goes for, for placing this is basically follow the movement um, of objects and the character and yeah in this case also it's coming from the background um, yeah, you saw before that I drew those um, fluid things I in Photoshop but um, right now you can see that I put it into Illustrator and retraced it with the uh, simple Illustrator retracer and I, I do this because this sketched um, on, on black and white can get retraced very easily by this program and what I have in the end is a vector based smart object that I can resize to the size whatever I want and yeah, that's the reason why I um, put it in there. Besides, um, the the retracer in Illustrator always um, retraces with an algorithm that gives the shape kind of a um, flow, let's say. So if I have some little edges inside, it just rounds those up and it just looks even nicer. Yeah, for for the lampions, I use the sketch and tune renderer. So I saved a lot of work for this. I'm normally not doing this. I'm normally retracing them on my own. But in this case, I decided to do this and retrace it in Illustrator later on because I knew that they were far in the background and they are relatively small and yeah therefore I 
don't want to waste so much time on on the amount of detail they they might have in the end and yeah I even copy pasted this whole um, group to have my sky filled with those lampions yes yeah, so far so good let's trace the temple um, what was a little bit difficult with the temple is that even if I created this uh, model in Cinema 4D with uh, very basic shapes, it it still has uh, a lot of round um, a lot of roundness in in the uh, shapes because I uh, deformed it that way. I wanted to have the the, the uh, kind of lens eye uh, le uh, fish eye effect of the lens and therefore the, the whole temple that is in the background is kind of distorted what uh, made the uh, the tracing a little bit more difficult but yeah as you may see in the end I think I did a great job on this one even if it, it took a lot of time Yeah, so uh, in general, what is uh, a little problematic in in creating these pictures is that it takes so much time. You you feel like you're working in a factory or something, just retracing, retracing, retracing. But um, uh, therefore, you should always uh, have some steps in between that gives you the feeling of coming closer to the final image because this is what keeps you motivated so some um, techniques that that I would suggest to you is that you um, give the give some pieces colors before the the actual thing is done and just to give your eye the feeling of oh look there's already some color inside of it it's just just one more step and I can color the whole thing something like this or you just um, keep the the retracing level or the line art at a very low level of detail and um, start working on, on the other things first and in the end you come back to that line art and just add lines uh, and and do all the details in the end like I'm doing with this piece um, because of course it's not finished as you um, may see soon but I decided to already yeah, import it into Photoshop um, even if I'm just halfway done but yeah, as I said it, it just gives you more confidence about uh, how far you already are and what is left you may also ask yourself um, what line thickness I use or um, what my rules are for this um, well basically I don't have a rule for that I just do this um, of what I think so if something is a little bit closer I sometimes increase the line thickness sometimes it depends on what kind of object I have so for instance if I have um, something very solid I, I keep the um, the line thickness uh, kinda um, yeah, at at the mid range, and if something is in in a lot of motion, I increase the the line thickness a little bit to, to give it some relevance as well. Um, things that are very far in the background m have like this this thinnest line thickness, of course, and objects that are 
like in the camera of course they have um, I don't know 10% line thickness of the original pro uh, of the original element so What I'm creating here is <laughs> a very weird technique, I would say. It's, uh, yeah, I don't want to say that I invented it, but I think no one did it like this before. So basically, it's just adding random shapes and with Control Shift uh, and X, I think, or Control Alt X, you can come into this uh, liquefier view and you can basically uh, yeah, change the, the shape of this kind of explosion that I created here. It's, uh, this explosion is inspired by anime explosions, so I googled anime explosions and just picked out some pictures I like and put them on my second screen. And what I'm doing right now is um, getting the, sh the shapes clean um, especially those black uh, one millimeter lines that occurred uh, that appeared yeah that yeah as you can see I just clean that out a little bit and once that's done I will also retrace this whole thing in Illustrator and put it back into Photoshop The reason why I'm getting rid of this white space is because I want to have my, um, I, I want to have the surface of this thing separated in Photoshop to adjust the colors later on. I also copy pasted this explosion and moved it around so um, I was kind of lazy to create a second one. But yeah, right now you see um, that I'm just working underneath this layer and I'm creating the background shape of the explosion. So at this stage, you, I think you might get a feeling of how my whole process works and how I'm creating my pictures and yeah I'm not so well prepared for this commentary <laughs> as some of you may have recognized already I'm just I just set set here on my uh, table said okay now let's do this commentary I installed audacity uh, thanks to the person that suggested me that program on uh, Twitter and yeah I just started to talk about this project here um, but what I w wanted to to uh, to inform you about is that I'm in a, a stage right now where I'm not sure of how I should go on with my YouTube channel um, as you may have seen that I I tried out a lot of things like this art competition last time that it worked out very uh, it turned out very well in my opinion but um, uh, once I started to once I started this cons uh, this contest I lost 100 subscribers at once I also regained some subscribers as well but I think a lot of people got disappointed because I did not uh, yeah I, I did not another frag movie which is uh, kind of absurd because this takes so damn long and um, the reward you get for it is like you get subscribers of course but that's it I mean what else do I get from creating a frag movie yeah I get some experience of course in, in movie making but I'm sure in the future I won't be sitting uh, at my job in, in a bureau 
or whatever and I won't have the possibility to edit some footage from a game so I think this will never happen and therefore I'm looking for a solution that might go more into the art direction to um, yes that that would support my career a little bit and this is also why you have seen a lot of speed arts of me lately and yeah this commentary basically is the first attempt of yeah trying out something new and to see of of how uh, this this will work and how you you will appreciate it or not i don't know um yeah what is dif difficult about the situation is that i'm not the best speaker for commentaries um i can't upload i don't know uh three or four videos a month of course because i have to work and yeah th this is the reason why i somehow trying to build up a kind of a community like i did with this contest because then i suddenly had some input fr from from others that i could upload and yeah another problem is um that i don't want to get rid of gaming at, uh all at once i or basically i never want this because i like gaming right now i i can't play games because i i don't have internet uh, up here in in my little new apartment but um yeah i i i'm definitely searching for a solution for for uh for good YouTube content in the future for my Facebook, Twitter and also on as well but um, yeah um, I have no idea of, of how I could uh, connect my art um, with a game or something there's just no possibility for me now bef in, in my recent uh, movie that I did I of course tracked some of my pictures on two walls but this is not what I want to do in the future um, so I'm not saying that I'm quitting the editing scene but um, as long as there are no games coming that uh, are good for editing I'm sorry guys but this, this won't happen yeah and so therefore you know my current situation I just need an alternative for um, my current concept to uh, the editing scene um, in general I want to have art included I don't want to get rid of gaming completely but yeah I basically can show you some uh, gameplay of um, basic games like Battlefield or stuff like this but nothing that will ever go viral and yeah therefore i will um do what i can do best in my opinion and this is art in in every yeah in every section maybe i can show you some some stuff like you saw here very uh, unique styles and techniques or mm, I try out some concept art things that go a bit more in hand with game design or something but yeah I think I'm not the professional person for this not at the moment yeah so I think my point is clear let me know what you think in the comments and maybe we can find a good solution together and my youtube channel goes back um, yeah a little bit becomes a little bit more active again okay so let's just go back to the painting a little bit as you may have recognized i added a lot of um, shadows recently of course when i place all those shadows i'm always considering uh, where the light is coming from so once an uh, object is more situated on the left side in this case i Place the sh uh, I 
place the shadow as well on the left side as the light is coming from the right and same goes f uh, in reverse for the right side yeah so I think this is pretty simple and you just have to get used to the path tool and how to use it what I'm doing right now is adding particles for some some first particles of there will be a lot more in the end and see where I'm going with this the, the places where I um, put those particles is, um, on on positions where something like like for instance the explosion where something is uh, coming from and I also try to um, give some motion to it and what you can see here is tracing some Japanese um, simple uh, symbols so yeah there are no borders set for for your creation if you want to have um, something Japanese inside that you don't even know if know some Japanese words or signs you just go to Google Translator and copy paste some font use a font that uh, is able to to um, have a full sign Unicode like uh, Arial for instance can display Japanese letters and um, go to your uh, um, Photoshop or Illustrator whatever type in your Japanese letter and then you can trace it and create your own Japanese style symbol logo whatever in this case I decided to have it a little bit um, more aggressive with uh, less roundness and more st straight shapes yeah and um, what you can see here is something that I have not included in the end I decided to, to make it a little bit different but basically what you can see is the name of the guy that I made the sprint for it's jump shit obviously and yeah, I wanted to have his name inside of the painting somewhere his small signature but I got rid of it because I just wasn't so so sure about the design it didn't went well and so I basically left that out and put it onto the clothes that I added later on on the character so at this stage when when the picture is almost filled with all the the goods you can start going into detail and uh, this is what I'm doing here like I add this kind of futuristic theme looking um, element um, areas that don't have so much um, detail or too less detail for my opinion um, are potential areas for adding details of course like you can see here on the left side this, this huge wall that is pretty good in sight but um, yeah there's something missing I just uh, created an, an object in Illustrator on another screen so you couldn't see that unfortunately but put that in and put it on the, on the position where I wanted it and yeah what I also want to show you is um, how to create this kind of cape that the character will have in the end you, you won't see it in the black and white version but in the end of this commentary I will uh, show you a final picture and they will see this cape as well it this for the style of the cape it also uh, has this very aggressive shape aggressive because it's it has these edges that are pretty uh, sharp and yeah it's it's, n it's not so complex to create but I think it's a very interesting technique to, to get uh, to ge get something um, or, or clothing like yeah, so uh, other objects that are created as you can see here are fruits in this case melons <laughs> I, I, I like melons yeah 
No, but seriously, um, I had this uh, before in the picture, and it uh, turned out to to become a potential, let's say, um, branding sign for for my art. Therefore, I wanted to have it again inside of a picture. And yeah, what what's also very interesting about um, melons as as a fruit seen from an art perspective is that it has this complementary um, colors. I mean, it fits just perfectly inside here. You have uh, this light coming from the uh, from the back with warm color, and you have the sword with cool colors, also very complementary. And then you have a green. Um, fruit with a red core, complementary colors as well, and you can do a lot of things with this and create a, a very interesting color sheen. And yeah, this is also a reason why I put this uh, melon inside of here. And yeah, I'm trying out to to write, give it uh, some particles to it. So basically, once this melon is cut, it also sprays out some um, fruit fluid, so to say, from it. And um, yeah, I also give the the object some motion. Therefore, because the the viewer can see that that this um, object is moving from right to left as the particles are um, following the object from that way. So adding a little bit of details here to the little signature on the sword and also to this kind of button dot thing. And yeah, so I think um, the next step are effects. Yes. So I um, I, wha what is also uh, very good about Photoshop in this case is uh, you are not um, fighting with weird filters that aren't sometimes working in Illustrator. Not sure if that only goes for me, but in Photoshop um, I can use the the layer styles to to get some um, glowing effects, for instance, and I can easily change it with the parameter sliders and. It's also a reason why I'm also liking Photoshop a lot. Another thing, of course, is the um, possibility to add or, uh, to have the layer style of add or multiply, different or um, overlay, of course. And yeah, this is also what what comes in handy when you're using Photoshop more than than Illustrator for such a piece. And yeah, right now I'm um, working on the very foreground that will be blurred at the very end. This is yeah, also a reason why I did not give s too much details to the bamboo in the foreground because I will blur them anyways. And you just should see that there is some detail, but uh, it's not completed. Or it doesn't has to be because, yeah, as I said, it's it will be blurred a little bit, and all the the I I won't put too much effort into it because uh, the major details will vanish anyway. So, um, what is very um, necessary in my opinion, if you are uh, implementing elements like water, for instance, is of the it, it gives you a lot of um, playful space to implement objects like in this case I just let uh, a kind of fruit dive into the water so I think this is something that you all would um, like to see and even if you have a lot of space uh, on the left side down there you why not just doing this and yeah there's something to discover in the picture it's not so boring and uh, additionally it will enhance um, the, the, the feeling of the water as now you can really see that this is a 
substance where something can dive into it. And yeah, right now I'm adding some lines in Photoshop and um, adding some details to it. In this case, to the temple, of course. I'm also correcting things you can see here and there. And yeah, even in the in the final stage, when you go to 100% zoom and search pixel by pixel, you will still find some edges that are not 100% clean. But I always try to eliminate as much um, sh shape mistakes as I can in the very beginning because. When you're already in a stage where you want to add colors, it's always better to know where your outlines are, especially when, when you do cell shading. Yeah, still you can change uh, everything to your needs in the end, but it's, it's always better. And of course, don't forget the shadow of the temple. And what I'm doing here is to even enhance more the, the liquid, the liquidity, I think you can say that, I don't know, um, of the water. So you, you will, um, ha you, you have to, to make the, the shadow a little bit wobbling over it. And the way I'm doing this is just using some Photoshop filters and retracing the black shape in Illustrator. So I keep my um, smart object uh, attribute of being scalable to the infinity. Yeah, and now you see the picture gets filled more and more. And it's also a reason why I'm blurring things a little bit, because even if you fill your pictures more and more, it you can kind of work against that a little bit if you just um, set a clear focal point and add some depth of field of course because you you can um, basically be a director of where the eye of the viewer go goes and where the eyes rest within the picture Okay, so that would be it for now. I hope you liked um, this commentary and I'm sorry for the bad microphone quality, of course. I know it sounds that the microphone is up in my nose or something, but no matter what I do, it's just broken or something, I don't know. Maybe in the future we'll have a, a better equipment for this, but um, yeah, please comment about uh, the the thing I mentioned regarding my current situation should be somewhere in the middle uh, of this commentary and see you next time. Bye bye.